Hello everyone, it's Ravili. So today this is a tutorial talking about the noise tracer that I have done shortly before. Note that uh, this is not a really a simulated result, which means there is a lot of limitation on the top of that. However, on the other hand, I think that the result is already kind of very interesting and that potentially there can be more advanced application that you can figure out. So this is a tutorial for that. Another thing is there's other variation, but we will probably discuss in a later date in a different tutorial. So let's just start. As always, I'm going to use the presets I built for myself. You can download them for free from the link in the description. It's kind of very difficult to explain the entire principle of this setup, but basically it's just to draw the noise in 3D space. But before drawing, we need to have all this kind of vector to guide the existence of this entire noise. So in this case, I'm first going to create an icosphere. This is icosphere, and I'm going to point instance the curve line on the top of that. So let's take a curve linear, which is basically just a curve line. So let's choose the Z mode by hitting 2-2 two, two, and let's disable the centering. Here I'm going to take a point distribute so that I can set amounts of distribution and also I obtain a rotation. So let's increase the amount. So all these kind of points that we generated, the distribution from the point distribute node is not very perfect. So we let's increase the subdivision so that it becomes a smoother or more kind of a spherical. Once we have this, let's take a realize instance and the set position. Here, instead of deform these kind of existing points, I'm rather using these points to actually draw out my noise. So I can take a noise 3D node. Noise 3D node is basically just a noise texture node with some polishing, like the mid level. And let's plug the color into the position. So now we lose the original mesh. Instead, we have all this kind of noise being created. Due to the existence of middle level, our color from the noise texture outputs a value range from negative 0.5 to the positive 0.5. Okay, that's why it's forming a kind of a ball around the world origin. Here, I want to scale this noise according to their index, or you can you can work based on the curve parameter. But there is a side effect of this curve parameter. So in this case, because curve parameters goes from the start to the end of a spline as zero to one, so which is basically a stop mode. In this case, if you increase this value of curve linear, it will not actually increase the scale of your noise. It will just uh, increase the complexity of this entire setup. And even if you change it to the step mode, it still increases complexity. So this is not what we want. So we're going to use the float range node, which basically function as a using the index method. So let's plug the curve into the loop and the start. Because we realized the instance, so we want all this kind of node to recall themselves as a individual spline. So let's plug this value into the scale. So now you can actually see the difference. So you, now if I increase the scale, then something is changing. If I increase the count, then they're lengthening themselves in, instead of being more complicated at the original place. So this is the effect from this step and this step instead of the curve parameter. Okay, you do not need to worry about this. But uh, here you may already realize the fact that we change all these kind of values here, then it will affect our noise. Because we're using this geometry as a guide to draw our noise. So any kind of a parameter that we change will actually affect our noise. For example, this count, this value, and even this radius. Here I also will actually decrease the frequency of our noise. So this almost has the same effect as your changing value also. So try to play around this kind of value and find an effect that you like. And you can also change the seed 
and finally you end up with some geometry that you like which is very cool here we're going to take a bevel curve node so that all this kind of curve start to have thickness we can even fill the caps increase the resolution 16 so it's more wrong to animate this entire geometry what we can do is basically just use a trim curve node and then we get such kind of result okay so this is the basic setup of the basic geometry and the basic animation and i think this is pretty cool okay so next we're going to move on talking about how to animate the texture when you are talking about uh, texturing of all this kind of a spline or hair particles you always need to think about the uv because this is very convenient so we plug we output the uv and let's just name that as a uv we also need to add a set material node so that there is a material being put onto our geometry so anytime if you're creating geometry within geometry nodes you need to set the material okay so let's go to shader editor and i'm going to remove this principle bsdf for now let's just uh, add a emission instead of principle bsdf and we need to import uv data using an attribute node so we need to put a texture in between so there are generally two ways of thinking but of course you can do whatever you want but uh, one kind of suggestion is to use the wave texture so go to material preview mode and this is what we're looking at this is looks kind of very horrible so let's decrease the scale and by playing around with this face offset we see some kind of interesting result okay so this is interesting but it still looks kind of very horrible let's forget about this another way of thinking is to use the spherical uh, gradient texture and within gradient texture there is a spherical texture and we still plug the uv and use the color so this looks kind of nicer although it's kind of very weird here i want you to understand that as explained in my uv tutorial that uh, this uv of curve is produced based on the curve parameter node which means from spline on x-axis it goes from 0 to 1 on y-axis it's also going to from 0 to 1 and it's not a relative to length which actually means that if you trim this curve then this texture is moving with this trim and this is not really desired in my opinion so i want them to stay at their locations without being affected by this trim so what we need to do is to tick this box so that in addition to the curve parameter we start to think about the spline length as well so that even if i start to trim this curve this texture still stay at the same place okay and to animate this entire texture we basically just animate uv you can animate inside the geometry nodes or you can animate inside the shader due to some reasons i'm going to animate that inside the geometry nodes so firstly i'm going to deal with a bug actually not really a bug but it's just a kind of a issue that because this is spherical texture so there is some part which it does not cover for example you can see that this part is whitish but on the back side of this curve is blackish so this is kind of a limitation of the sphere because it's a sphere so it does not cover all the region within a square so here what we do is basically just a separate xyz so that we do not count all this kind of missing part of a square anyway just a kind of idea and by manipulating this uv then we are animating this spherical texture okay and if you do not like the size of this spherical texture then you just uh, add a multiply if you worked with shader often enough then you will realize that the mapping 
if you increase the scale, then the texture actually goes to be smaller. This is the same principle as this multiplying math that you increase the value, you actually shrink the spherical texture. They become smaller. So this is kind of idea. So right now this is kind of good, but it's still kind of boring. It's not very good because there's no variance. Randomness is always a key to the interesting part of your animation. So we need to add some variance. Recently, I just uh, created a new preset, which is called a motion variance. Which is basically just the two random value node. And you just plug that into place and then you play with the parameter. And you can see there's buggy results here. This is because all these kind of random value nodes, they are operating based on the index or ID. And in this case, often all this kind of index and ID comes from every point on the spline so that there are tons of random value. But we only want a random value per spline, so we need to uh, create an index. So let's uh, take an attribute spline node, and there will be an index per spline, and plug that into ID. So immediately we fix this kind of problem, and you can play around with the variance value that you we have. There are two kinds of variance I created. One is the start variance. So by changing this value, their position will be completely different. You can choose to clamp it or not. If you do not clamp that, then this is how this starting point look like. If you clamp that, they will start at zero points. And then you just work with the parameter, then they start to move at the same time. Okay, so this is kind of idea. Another variance I created is just the speed variance. So the velocity for them to move along this spline will not be the same. So you can try to play around with what's called parameters and you can of course change the seed as you want. There is one issue however is that if because we're essentially animating the UV to move this spherical texture. So if we move too much then this sphere will just went away from the UV range. So we no longer see it. So we need to loop this UV map by using the modulo function. Actually, I already created a loop at function within this motion variance node. And we are going to loop with the spline length because that's the distance for this entire texture to travel. Okay. And I didn't create a preset for the spline length, so we have to capture that manually. So add a capture attribute node and uh, add a spawn as node and do the linkage and finally plug these attributes into the loop at so now after one spawn has been finished there there will be seconds thirds fourths and they will just keep going it will be endless so you can try to play around with this spawn lens if you think the interval for them to go in on the spline is kind of too frequent, then you can add a math node. So that it will be less frequent or whatever. You can try to play around with this kind of values. And basically this is it. The rest is basically all about changing all these kind of parameters and so on and so forth. And that's it. I hope this tutorial is not very overwhelming. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.